Previously on Silo, Season 1, Episode 5, we learned that there's a janitor's closet, mysterious closet down in the depths of the silo. Additionally, the pact, we learned that that doesn't allow magnification and mechanization. And lastly, we've learned of the, the star guy who's flirting at night with Juliet. What'd you think about the episode Silo Season 1, Episode 6? Episode 6, I give it a 5 out of 10, a little bit better than the previous episode. But still, it feels like we're in a holding pattern where there's still lots of mysteries and stuff to be revealed. But we're focusing on cop stories. I want to know more. I want to know about the water. I want to know about the tunnel. I want to know about outside. I want to know more, more. And we're getting what I think is less interesting storylines. I'm... I'm not sure the silo society makes sense. I still need to learn more. But I really did like Common's um, performance of Sims. Um, so, better than the previous episode. I still feel like we're in a holding pattern. 5 out of 10. What do you think? I think it was a weak episode. I felt like there were conversations that were forced that didn't seem make sense for the characters to have them. Like I get it why they need to have these conversations, but it didn't feel right. It felt like they were just doing it because they, they had to. I also felt like the the characters were inconsistent, like like Sim's behavior as this all knowing person, but then doesn't know about like doesn't know about like that cavernous bottom uh, with the drills. Like, it's weird that that his character isn't quite the same all the time. Um, also, there like there were other characters that I got this this feeling that like they're they're not consistent with themselves. Didn't feel good. Um, additionally, there's just the entire silo, the entire society, like. How does this place function? Like, how do these power dynamics play out? They don't, they, they seem like they're on and off. It doesn't seem like there's an overall structure to it. And so I also agreed that the episode was better than season one, episode five. However, better for me goes from a two to a three. Um, hopefully this series can turn it around before the end. We're coming up pretty close to the end. Um, we'll see. Hopefully they do it. Yeah. Curious about the lore. Maybe they will... Give us some more lore as we go, and maybe we'll make more compelling storylines. Yes. We'll see. Let's get into it. So F is for forgiveness. <laughs> I wonder if they have ABC days, 26 days a year, or a different holiday. A is for absolution. B is for basic day, which means yeah. get to work. It's, <laughs> it's almost every day is a B day. <laughs> that's, that's good. <laughs> so... So we were introduced the idea of a forgiveness holiday. So let's read the sign and see what this means. In light of recent incidents and in the spirit of goodwill, community, and commerce, citizens are encouraged to let go of the past, let go of past grievances, to travel beyond familiar levels, to see old friends, oh. to give gifts, and to spend credits in the marketplace where crafts of all types can be acquired. Um, I thought the forgiveness holiday was people found relics and they could turn them in with no question asked. But that's not on the sign here. <laughs> that's right. Um, I, I didn't read this while watching the episode. This is the first time I'm reading it. I thought Forgiveness Day was like a day you can get away with crimes. <laughs> oh gosh, like the purge. That, that's what I was thinking. I think they mentioned later in the episode, it's like, if you have a relic, you can turn it in. Right. And, and, the, and the sheriff would be like, okay, no problem, whatever. Which, that's the only crime that they gave forgiveness for. Yeah. Mm. But maybe there's more. Yeah, maybe. Mm. I don't think they do a purge where it's like, I can kill my neighbor. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but this is not what I expected this sign to say. Um, like, yeah. go see old friends on forgiveness day? Yeah, actually, yeah. Why is that a forgiveness issue? Yeah, that sounds like a family day or like a friend's day. Both Fs. So really, instead of forgiveness day, they should call it the F day. Right. Where you go F around. Mm-hmm. Then you give gifts in the turn in the form of relics. Nope, that won't work because that's illegal. <laughs> that's illegal. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's take a look. So in previous episodes, we mentioned what? How does the database work? How does IT work? Um, and it seemed like we came to the conclusion that the database is actually not very efficient. It's actually difficult to look things up. The records exist on the database somewhere but might take some expertise to go retrieve. Hmm. Uh, but in this episode, we saw, we see in the sheriff's office, we see Juliet interacting with the database, inputting data, getting responses back on a terminal on a different level than IT. So maybe the database is more capable than we think. Let's take a look. She's interacting. 
She gets a chime. That's a database coming back at her. Another chime. Database coming back at her. This scene was weird to me and inconsistent because we in I think it was episode four where Marnes and Juliet goes down and like he didn't check the database to see if that if that woman had died or not. And so that gave me the feeling like oh, checking the database must be complicated or it must be like time cons time expensive so like just forget it and i'm gonna, we're gonna skip turns out that that marnes had a computer in the sheriff's office that he could have just tip 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 and then it would have sent it and been fine in fact it's not like he has to sit there and like watch the screen watch the screen watch the screen and when is this thing going to turn like you just sit there do some paperwork hey do some sudokus i don't know that you have that style but then like it gives a little chime a little push notification like hey the thing's done there, there's the thing it's weird it's weird that like there was a problem encountered but actually there's a very easy solution already built in. And this database has consequences throughout the silo. Like if it's easy to look things up like census data, resource management, and it's quite capable, uh, that resolves some of the problems that we've seen in the silo. That's right. uh, a good example of this is like tape. Mm -hmm. Juliet stole some tape from IT, but if tape inventories are easily looked up on the database, then we can see if there's surpluses or not, and we can allocate resources well. That's right. It's not just like free floaty tape. So, That's right. In fact, instead of nearly needing to steal it, they could they have an inventory of all the tape in the silo mm -hmm. and say, oh, we're running low. Uh, the the engineering, the down deep hat needs them. We'll just make some more. We get a, we get a five month lead time, start making it. Oh yeah, that's true. Weird. So yeah, interesting. We'll keep an eye out for more of these database interactions in the show to see how the consequences Oh, yeah, this is interesting. So there's a relic grace period. If you find a relic, somehow you know it's a relic. I don't know if you always know. You have, was it 24 hours to turn it into judicial before you get into trouble? How they determine, like, I hadn't touched it. I hadn't touched it. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. You're like, you're like, I've actually had it for five months, but I'm just going to tell judicial, like, oh, yeah, I found it like 10 hours ago. That's, yeah. mm -hmm. I don't know. Right. I mean, that's, that's your go-to every time. Let's watch. You didn't take that to judicial? Keeping an illegal relic beyond the 12 hour window from discovery to judicial handoff is a pretty serious crime. So it's okay that there is this official law that from discovery to turn in, you had a 12 hour grace period, but essentially unenforceable. Because if you ever go into somebody's place and they're like, what's that? That's a relic. Well, when'd you find it? Less than 12 hours ago. What number do you want? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, wait a minute. You had time to frame that thing and hang it up on a wall? Like, yeah, I did that like 40 minutes ago. <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> what are you going to do? You can't prove it. So that's right. Interesting. Also here, there's this, uh, this letter. Dear Sheriff Nichols, didn't find what you were looking for. I'll let you know if that changes. And it's signed by somebody, but we don't know who it is. We right. think it's Juliet's mentor in the down deep, but not sure. Right. I'm not sure. I mean, I mean, I guess that looks like looks like last name, comma, first name, mm -hmm. and the last name is pretty short. First name is maybe mm -hmm. eight, ten characters, um, but I couldn't figure out who that was. Mm. Maybe this will come up in the future. We're not sure. Just a little teaser note. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay, so Juliet visits Judicial to talk to oh, what's her name, Judge. Um, I think Judge Judy. No, Judge, uh, who is that boxing referee? Irrelevant. Judy. <laughs> um, so we go talk. So Julia goes to talk to judicial, um, and if that Sims knows so much about all these, like offhand, he's almost like stalking Juliet. Let's watch. We have a far more extensive catalog of information. S Sims and judicial or even Janitor's Closet, has a far more extensive database, I will not share it with you. Shh, shh. Yo, dude. In judicial, we know that watch you wear on your wrists. I know. That particular... He, he notices the watch on her wrist, and he's like, I'm going to make sure I know everything about Juliet. Yeah, like, item just... way too much, dude. Like, yeah. you see your watch, you're like, mm, I'm going to look it up. <laughs> mm. Yo. Despite being in your possession, I know. It's currently registered to a now deceased, I know, George Wilkins. <laughs> He's like, your ex, fuck that guy. Fuck that guy. You got that watch. I'm not stalking you, but Jesus. Sims, what are you doing? I mean, in his defense, like, 
his records are really good. Like, yeah, like, they are really good. Like, like, I saw that watch once. I know exactly who we're, who it belongs to, and I know mm-hmm. that it's not been signed out. I know it's on your wrist. I know who it is. Like, whoa, dude. Yeah, just just it's like it's a watch. Dial it back. Chill, dude. Yeah. Also, in the same office, we see the judge use this blind that goes up. Let's watch. So my issue with this was (laughs) you have a 250-year-old blind, perhaps, that needs this sophisticated friction system that you can move it easily and then stops where you want to put it. I mean, I have no mechanism that I know in, in our lives that works for hundreds of years with this temperamental friction system. So, and it goes up. Why not make it a down system so you can at least go open and closed if it fails? That's right. That's right. Because because here, if you the failure mode, like if the spring system or whatever friction system they have, if it doesn't work, this blind like slams down, yeah. which means you're now getting like a stick or something to prop it up. And, and the default mode is no privacy. I'd rather have something that slides down from the top. So that way the default mode is sets down and clears and blocks the window. Mm-hmm. What I didn't like here was that that the ju- the head of the digital like slides up this wooden panel until she can't see out. And she's like, good. We have privacy, but like clearly in the back there, can we highlight? That's the staircase, which means someone can just climb up half a floor and be like, "I'm higher than you now." Like I see what's going on in your meeting. And we know later in the episode, there's tons of spies in the silo, people right. looking at each other. They don't have much to do. Close the window all the way, because if there's somebody looking through the window, they're gonna they're gonna know what's going on. That's right. In fact, maybe you make you make the spies the friends of the of the silo. You make them like the the runners, the porters, and so they're just going up and down all day carrying something in the back. But actually, you know, give them a little spy. In which case, if they're higher than than judicial's office, as they're coming down, they get a little peep in there and see who's you who you're talking with. Just just bring this wooden screen. Just bring it all the way up, all the way up. What is this? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what she's doing. Hmm. So now we so talk about databases again. So Judicial's database, not only they have a terminal that accesses the database, Sims has his own personal walk-in safe. Let's take a look. So here he is looking up the Pez dispenser. Personal safe in his office with hard copies. Pez dispenser. Legal! Radioactive. What does this? What does this say? Interview with confidential informant. Informant names George Wilkins as relic holder. George Wilkins identifier. Same identifier as we've seen before. Current status: relocated mechanical computer support. So interesting. Wilkins was a confidential informant. He, he was not. If somebody was a confidential informant and they tattled on George Wilkins. Oh, uh, I see. But man, that's actually a quite a weak spot in judicial system because they're just like, we super 100% trust our informants and those people can just finger anyone they want. Yeah, I mean, if they wanted to get rid of a friend or something, they could accuse them. Finger them. Yeah. You don't like this person? Finger them. So George Wilkins might actually be a good guy. He just has somebody who doesn't like him. That's right. It he could be, it. yeah, we'll see. I also didn't like, <laughs> they have digitized records Right, here is the the Pez dispenser. But then they also have hard copies. And this is okay, but like maintaining hard copies, maintaining digital copies, maintaining a database, to the extent that you're monitoring Pez dispensers, I mean the manpower required to do this is through the roof. Through the roof. Oh my gosh. I also didn't like his safe because it's like plain sight. It's like in his office, which I assume is his like his official judicial mm-hmm. office. And so like people can see all the relic stuff back there. It's not like like I, I would imagine if this stuff is so forbidden, what judicial really should do is destroy them and just shove all that stuff into the janitor's closet. Like like the, the, the janitor's closet. Instead they have this door that has this like like safe locking this this trigonal shaped locking mechanism on a glass door. <laughs> like, what, how safe things be? Just kick the door open. 
Just just throw a brick. Break the glass. Yeah, so it's an overbuilt lock, given that it's a glass door. You just have a regular lock. Even if it wasn't glass, it's a wood door. Break the wood door. So, yeah, interesting. Does Judicial know about the janitor's closet? Because this is a Judicial hard copy location. Right. I, my suspicion is that Judicial... Oh, I see what you're saying. So my thought that Judicial doesn't know about the janitor's closet. So that means that they can't actually get rid of these relics because if the relics disappear, then they either have to be seen as destroyed or they've disappeared somewhere and then that causes investigation. Mm -hmm. So you need to have this place, which is visible to people and say like, oh, that's where judicial hides all the relics. Okay, Mm -hmm. fine. That's just a box. They're fine. So it's kind of a, it's a safe in his office. I would have thought it would be a warehouse in judicial somewhere, not necessarily in his private office. That's right. Is in, in in his private office. If we go b- skip forward in our video, mm-hmm. it's super clean in there. Like either there's custodial staff going in there and cleaning, like wiping. There's no dust. Either they're wiping everything, or like a good chunk of his day, or maybe his week, is spent cleaning this room. Yeah, unless it's pretty. No, there has to be janitors. There has to be somebody coming here, cleaning it, maintaining it, updating the records, deleting things out of the records where things have been destroyed. This is a lot of work to make sure that this is in this kind of shape. I don't think Sims can do this by himself because he's off doing Sim work, stuff. work out in the field. That's right. So yeah, there's substantial manpower needed for this. Hmm. Weird. So I don't really understand how the silo works. There seems to be a lot of manpower focused on like organization of relics and spying. And and also generating plastic because these are plastic bags. I don't think they have access to oil. Like how are they making plastic bags? So maybe farmers, you know, with corn and different corn oil okay yeah i think you can make plastics out of that kind of stuff but it's such a a reliant on farmers to make sure their job is being done well they got to feed the silo they got to make plastics now we haven't learned anything about the farmers in the silo and how the ecosystem works that's right um arguably farmers are the most important people in the silo yeah skip and (laughs) and sims is like i don't care about farmers i care about my personal relics closet (laughs) Okay, Sims. Okay, Sims. Okay, Sims. Silo has cats. So we go into, oh, I don't know her name, but she's George Wilkins' former girlfriend, and she's a cat. Let's watch. Planet. Soon, baby. Her place is like the junk room at recycling. And the smell of that cat food. So this means a lot of things to me. One is that they produce cat food. Like, like, so, so one, cats are obligate carnivores, which means they have to eat meat to some, to some amount because they cannot produce whatever amino acids, something, I, I'm not a biologist, um, which means that they're feeding cows, and, uh, feeding cats animals somehow, which, okay, I guess that means they have an, an ample resource of, of uh, beef. I also thought that maybe they have cats because they have a rat problem. Like, imagine if they had like a, like a, a rodent infestation. This could be a big problem for a society because, for example, the Black Plague, like it's, it's rodents that bring around plague and they eat your grain, they, they spoil all your supplies. So it would make a lot of sense to keep cats around um, to do that. In fact, like my university, we have, we have little cat colonies around campus because they're good for rodent populations. And so, so this could be used very, very thoughtfully by judicial. If, if you have a silo, if you have this tube where everyone's living in and it's sealed from the outside world, you could exterminate all the rats. In fact, they have rat poison. Um, but if they have rat poison and and the rats keep coming and the cats, they have cats and the rats keep coming, that would suggest to me that there's a leak. We don't actually have a sealed system. And if there's if we don't actually have a sealed system, that means there's holes, which means go find those holes. And as judicial, if I need to know everything that's going on in the silo, I can't possibly have this cave underneath the silo with this big drill machine and like, and I, I'm unaware of it. Like if I need to be aware of everything going on the silo, I need to be aware of everything in the silo. And so this cat being here tells me that the judicial is missing something. They're, they're missing what's going on in the silo. Yeah. I guess also they're nice. Like also they're nice. Yeah. <laughs> 
Even if the cat wakes me up in the morning, I'm like, ah, it's okay, you're cutie. Yeah, and I think people would want cats because people like pets. We haven't seen a dog yet, though. Wait a second. We haven't seen a dog. That's right. Yeah. Maybe dogs that require like play areas, a lot of space. Like cats can be pretty okay in small areas. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Hmm. So we'll see if we see any cats hunting rats in the future or if they're just people's pets. We'll see. Okay, let's take a look. This is when Sims comes all the way up to the sheriff's department and uh, we'll see, let's see, he clears the room. We need the room. That was weird to me because like, we have different groups. We have the mayor's office, we have the IT guy, we have a separate group for sheriff and a separate group for judicial. judicial. And then Sims, a representative of judicial, just comes in, he's like, we need the room. Like, sure, you can declare that you need the room, but all the, the the officers in the sheriff's office need to answer to Juliet. So so it was weird. It was weird. Like, do the sheriffs also, like, do they, do they like, subconsciously, do they, do they have a standing order to, like, whenever judicial comes around, do whatever judicial says? Weird. We need the room. I think we're supposed to learn here that judicial has all the power. So if judicial tells anybody anywhere to do something, they believe judicial has power, and so they do it. So without any hesitation, all of the sheriff's deputies and office workers leave the office so they can have this conversation. Let's watch. There's an interview with a confidential informant that indicates the relic you brought in earlier was an illegal possession belonging to your colleague, George Wilkins. <laughs> Sims just goes around, you know, I have an informant that says you're a piece of shit. And I have an informant that says, you're doing illegal stuff over there. And I have an informant that I'm making up right now that says, I don't like you. I'm pushing you off the stairs. Who's your informant? We can't say that. We can't say it. We have no obligation to say that to anyone. <laughs> okay, Tyrant. I don't understand. According to judicial records, a search was conducted of Wilkins' place before he died. In that search, they found nothing. Wilkins' relic mysteriously appeared in Trumbull's apartment as a result of a search coordinated by you. First time I ever saw that relic was last night in Trumbull's place when Billings showed it to me. Wait. I mean, let's keep in mind, this is a Pez dispenser. Who gives a fuck? Yo, chill. Yo. Yo, yo, yo I found a paperweight in your office. Uh... Hang him! Hang him! That's illegal! Illegal paperweight! You're not allowed to hold down your paper! <laughs> we don't have wind in the silo. Hang him. Something suspicious if someone thinks there's wind in the silo. Something wrong with that. Hang him. <laughs> wrong. Proven wrong. Uh, Sims, George and I were friends. I never received anything from him, especially something as <laughs> ridiculous as that thing. On the day ridiculous. judicial searched George Wilkins' apartment, was Trumbull member of the search team? Man, the name of judicial search team members are strictly confidential. You know, you know that. that. I'm in no way required to reveal that information to the sheriff's department or the mayor's But office. if Trumbull was on that search team, is it even slightly possible that he simply thought that the artifact was a harmless curio and decided to take it home for himself? Did you? So is Bernard here undermining Sims? He's kind of all mild-mannered sitting in the corner. You know, I'm just, I'm just here because I'm obligated to be here or something. And then he's like undermining Sims's accusatory position towards Juliet. What's his angle here? I don't know where Bernard sits. I, guess I live in the corner. I don't know where his allegiance <laughs> sits. Um, yeah, he totally undermine, undermine, undermined Sims. I wonder if he knows that Sims killed Trumbull. And so he's kind of like, hmm. he's like poking at him and saying like, we could ask Sims if Sims was alive and like, Sims, we can ask Trumbull if Trumbull was alive, but like Sims can't say anything because Sims knows that he mm -hmm. killed Trumbull. Maybe he suspects. There's, do you think he knows? Well, either way, sure. I got bad vibes from Bernard at the beginning of the series. Now I'm getting neutral to positive vibes from Bernard. Like he's looking, he's undermining Sims a little bit. Maybe he's got an agenda that could be positive. That's right. Not sure yet. So he's kind of an unknown factor find anything to explain why Trumbull would want to murder Morris and Johns? No. As far as everybody knows, Morris and Johns died of heart issues brought on by walking the silo. Any further investigation might expose the truth and that could prove destabilizing. Some mysteries are best left unsolved. 
that could be interpreted as undermining Sims, or that could be interpreted as like, hey, Juliet, pump the brakes a little bit on this bullheaded investigation. Mm -hmm. So he's protecting her? I'm not sure. I also read it like he is experienced in maneuver in doing this political maneuvering. He's saying some investigations are left best left unsolved in earshot of, of Sims, which have, could be investigated for the dis, for the death of Doug Trumbull. So it's like a message Ooh, to everyone right. to be like, chill, chill, everyone. Like we could get each other's at each other's necks, but like, or we could everyone just back off a little bit. And that's right. He could be saying this vaguely enough that he says, hey, I know things, but I'm not going to tell you exactly what I know which makes everybody's wheels spin upstairs thinking, what does he know? Where should I stop? So everybody Settle down. settles down. Hmm, he could be quite astute at maneuvering in these power spaces. Hmm, interesting. I suddenly like him. Yeah, I, I hope he's a good guy. Yeah. The syndrome. So uh, we saw in with the painter, the painter, like his hand shaked when, when Marnes and Juliet came, came in and he like tap, tap, tap on the rail. And then we also saw it again with, with um, Paul Billings. Like when he goes, when he's walking next to Sims, he like clasps his hands so that you hide, he hides shaking. And then, and then Juliet and Sims, that's uh, Juliet and, and Billings have a conversation about it. Let's watch. You want honesty? I do. I do. Your hands shake. You have flashes of pain. Sure. Under pressure, you clench your hands so tight. I'm surprised your fingers don't fall off. You have the syndrome. That's the syndrome. And so, like, that's a big deal. And you can see on his face, he's like, he's thinking about the implications. Like, if people know I have the syndrome, it's a it's a big issue. And and in fact, after this, Juliet's like, Juliet's like, you know you have the syndrome. It's against the pact. You're not allowed to have this job. And so my thought was like. Why does the pact care so much about the syndrome? Because it seems to me, I mean, living, you know, in, in our world, like he's got, he's got some hand problem, whatever, nerve damage. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it happens, whatever. But it doesn't make him less like, cognitively able to do his job. It doesn't make it like something that I need to outlaw. So, so what's going on in the silo world, in the silo, in the silo, such that they, it was so important that they need to make the syndrome a part of the pact. Maybe it's contagious, but that, that, that people don't act mm -hmm. scared. Like when they find somebody who has the syndrome, they still, okay. still wander around in the, the corridors and they go to their regular house. Right. They may not have positions of power, but nobody's like, they're not in like a quarantine zone. Right. So if, I don't if, think it's contagious. Right. If it was contagious, people wouldn't be like, Oh bummer or oh bad, they would be like mm, distance myself. Like I, I don't want to risk getting it. So mm -hmm. I don't. I, I agree. It's not contagious. But but what what was so bad about having the the syndrome that that the pact whoever wrote the the founders I guess made it in the pact. My thought was that maybe it's some sign of neuro degradation. And so when you have neuro neurological when you have neurological degradation that couldn't be a sign of you're getting closer to death. And perhaps when people are closer to death, they're, they're, less, they're less reserved. They're, they're more willing to call out injustices or, or other junk that they see around in the world. And in terms of controlling and, and maintaining a society, you really don't want people flying off the handle. You really want them saying like, my life is pretty good as it is, I'm gonna let it ride. Um, maybe, may, maybe that's what's, why syndrome is so bad. So you're thinking, if somebody has the syndrome in a stable area of the silo, they now become a poison apple or a, a rotten apple in this barrel of the silo. Right. And they start corrupting people around them because right. they're about to die. And they're like, this is fucked up. That's fucked up. Right. right What's right, he right. doing? I'm imagining like, like, you know, those like grandpas that are like, I lived the life. I did the right thing. I did all jobs. But like, I'm not going to kowtow anymore. I'm going to call it like it is. Like that, that's what I'm imagining. Mm possibly so this is the syndrome being like you gotta declare it and isolate it's right. for societal stability right which is not necessarily even a bad thing it's like we we as far as we know we're the only humans left in existence we need to make sure that the silo survives and if this is one of the things you got to do then maybe maybe so in summary bring back leper colonies let's do it that's right. That is what I just argued. Fuck. 
Send him to the island. Ridiculous. <laughs> oh, so we go to Wilk. So Juliet goes back to Wilkins' ex-lover, and she's all crazy. And okay, so we got some story points, but I thought, how many spies are in the silo? The population is 10k, and there's spies on Wilkins' ex-girlfriend. Who does she talking to? Let's watch. For every one question I wouldn't answer, he threatened hey. two people I loved. Two people I loved. If I left the apartment, he'd turn up at night, the foot of my bed in the darkness, and he would recite the names of everyone that I had talked to that. So they have spies in multiple locations around the silo following her. That's probably one to two people following her, writing down everybody that she's talked to and a person to show up at the foot of the bed to intimidate her. I mean, that's at least three people, plus maybe one or two office workers to support that structure and handler. I mean, and this is happening in multiple locations around the side. How, how many people are in this spy apparatus? It, it feels like of 10,000 people, 6,000 of them are spies. <laughs> <laughs> it's like everybody's a spy and it's just this network of spies throughout the silo. And some people report to other people and everybody's like, I'm not a spy. I'm not a spy. But everybody's a spy for somebody. <laughs> what, 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 if, what if all of those people that she loves were actually already spies? <laughs> so she's like <laughs> interacting with people and they're like, uh, yeah, I did talk to her today. I talked to her that. My update is that I'm the spy. And yeah, and I talked to her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and it turns out the person at the front of the bed who's intimidating her, her granddad. Granddad. And, and he's, he's like... He's got the syndrome. He's like, I'm going to call it like it is. I'm like just doing can't. my job. Yeah. <laughs> doing my job. They hired me for a job. I'm doing my job. Get in line. <laughs> Ridiculous. Oh, oh. The book. This the is book. the book that was... The book. <laughs> this is the book that was passed down in Wilkins' family from like grandmother to his mom to him. Mm -hmm. And apparently it's real evil, but it's kept inside the doormat. And so it's The Amazing Adventures in Georgia, a travel guide mm -hmm. for kids. Mm -hmm. And so I had this thought. I had this thought like, yeah, open it up to the pages. Mm -hmm. But when you see stuff inside, like for us, like, yeah, this is a forest. Cool, cool, awesome, right? And mm -hmm. that's Chatta, Chattahoochee. That doesn't sound... That is, that's right, Chattahoochee. 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 And so, like, I see it as a bunch of trees. And maybe, maybe Juliet can see it because she knows what a tree looks like. Yeah. But as we go deeper into this, like, she sees all these animals there, animals yeah. that she's never seen. I mean, I guess you could say that's like, she's seen cats and, and, and cows before. Mm -hmm. But all these other animals, like, these, these, yeah. you wouldn't even have concept of what these are. And she's never been outside. So, like, rocks and boats and like she's never seen a rock before i mean she's never seen a rock before like she's seen rock on the side like concrete or like stuff on the side of the silo but like a big boulder just resting and, and I, I guess i guess maybe she's she's seen rocks because she and george wilkins went down into the the drill mm -hmm. build and play area so there's rocks and a large body of water mm -hmm. But certainly not running water. Certainly not not rocks that are just out on their own, not just built into the cave wall. And and these raft things, like what what is what, this? What like, is this like? My I don't know if I, I've had Juliet's life experiences. I my brain would be able to comprehend what I'm looking at. It would look cool, but I, I'm not sure it would make sense. Like what is this fucker? monster? This would scare the shit out of me. Like, like what the, what hell, the is this? hell is this? It's like how like you pick you you could if you don't know how big it is. Like I know how big a dolphin is. It's like human size ish. Huggable, yeah. Right? I could picture it as this monstrous thing. I'm like, That's what right. the fuck? That's right. Why is it smiling at me? What does it know? Yeah. Like, what is going on? And like, what the hell is this? Like, I've never seen a shell before. That's With right. Juliet's life experience, I put That's myself right. in Juliet's head. Like, what the hell is this? What the hell is this weapon sharp looking thing? Actually, like, yeah. It actually might, she might interpret it as like a turbine something. Hmm. And but then she looks at it and she got the engineer Brian. She's like, oh man, that golden ratio. Look at that. Like, perfect curve. Nature ratio, loves yeah. that shit. And then this one, this one to me would be extremely incomprehensible. There's really not much context clues about what you're looking at. Like she kind of knows what sky is from I mean, the camera. From feed. the cameras, yeah. She doesn't really know what an ocean is or no sand way. or grass. I mean, I mean, the largest body of water she's seen was down in the bottom in that drill. Yeah. Like she's never seen an ocean. And, and I've heard this from people that like they like grow up in deserts and then they travel to the first time to see the ocean and it's just like mind-boggling like like mm -hmm. growing up in a world where water is scarce and then just seeing a 
fucking ocean. Like, like it's mind boggling that this is even possible. And sand, she's never seen sand. Like, mm-hmm. To her, like, what is sand? There's just no concept of it. Mm-hmm. Um, imagine it's like in, if if people traveled by boats at most, and then one day you see a plane flying in the sky. Like, if you don't know that people are inside it, you're just like, okay, a pointy thing in the sky. You have no idea what it is. Mm-hmm. So we'll see how this plays out going forward. Does this just spur curiosity? Or is she like, I know that's a beach. I know that's a dolphin. I know that's an animal. I'm like, we'll see. Hopefully it just spurs curiosity in her mind and she starts to learn more about the outside world. Uh, I would even be okay with fear. Like, what the hell is this? That's like, true. Some of this stuff, I mean, if you don't know what a dolphin is, it's scary. This is even sinister looking in a, in a certain light. Like, if you're... Uh, those are clearly edges. Yeah. It's clearly sharp. So, yeah. The mystery of the unknown and... It... Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. And then, of course, at the end of the episode, she's leafing through the book. And there's like... These perverts are watching her. Right. I mean, I mean... To be fair, they're spying on her appropriately. But come on. Come on. Come on. Come we on. know there's a bunch of guys in a spy agency looking no at oversight. a bunch of women's apartments. That's right. Uh, it's going to get inappropriate real fast. Real fast. Real fast. Real fast. They don't seem to have much corruption in terms of these apparatuses in the silo. But come on. Come on. This is this is terrible. Also, super weird tech. Why are these screens so good? Oh, yeah, like the computers that people use for the databases so bad. are like Fallout, green screen, mm-hmm. weird, like old, old, old techie stuff. Yeah, we kind of thought before that the green screens were the only ones that survived and these good monitors didn't last. But here they are lasting. Do we think the janitor's closet is manufacturing monitors? No way. No way. No way. No way. No way. Are these all janitor's kids? Because this guy is not Sims, but mm-hmm. he works here. So he's got to be tight-lipped. Like every person yeah. that you occupy, how many chairs are there? Every mm-hmm. every person that sits on one of these chairs, it, they need to be 100% tight-lipped perfectly for their entire right. life. And they can't spill even a hint that such an apparatus of spy exists. And it would be, if they even lived in an isolated part of the silo that never cross-talked, they still need to deliver food into it. And people would be like, Why am I delivering? every day. Like what, what's in there? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People yeah. talk. People talk shit. People make up stories. I mean, there's there even if there's two hundred stories, I don't remember how many mm-hmm. stories there are in the silo. Like, yeah. if there's one story that's like, oh yeah, people don't go there. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I'm a Simba. I mean, we're like, yeah, I want to go to that dark place. <laughs> like, well, what is that? Yeah, like like teenagers would probably cause trouble and try to that's break right. in and stuff. That's right. So the fact that this is like Juliet has no idea that this spy apparatus exists. That's hard to believe. That is hard to believe. Is There's anybody a... doing power calculations? Because they got that mechanical. turbine down at the bottom. Mechanical is right. running this turbine to generate power for everyone. And it's like, yeah, I, we have we have mm-hmm. ten thousand people, so mm-hmm. I don't know, like five thousand, six thousand rooms. Mm-hmm. And so, like, you can calculate how much power this place needs. And then this thing is just a huge energy sink. <sighs> I don't know if this makes sense. I don't know. It's weird. It's weird. How do you keep the secret? Right. Yeah. For hundreds of for years. hundreds of years. And the suicide one, rate must be super high. Just every time someone figures out a little bit, like toss them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight chairs. We, all, we at least know there's one room with eight chairs. That's probably 20 workers. That's right. Well, I mean, I mean, assuming they do three shifts a day so that right. they're monitoring all the time. That's, that's, that's 20, 24 already. 24 workers. Right. Plus support staff. Support staff. Plus uh, maintenance staff. Uber Eats is still delivering food here. Like that's a right. bunch the, of food comes here. Like, like. <laughs> Leave the food outside and don't come. Like, yeah, the, the farmers' resources have to go to the spy agency somehow, and the farmers have to be very careful about how they distribute their resources. They're going to right. notice a siphon of resources. That's right. I have, what do these people tell? What do the people who work here? What do they tell people that their day jobs? Oh yeah, I just sit in their box. What do you do? Uh, nothing. I masturbate all day. Long. I mean, I spy all day. Jacket. 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 This look at this guy. He's ready. What's his left hand doing? I'm going to run the numbers and say he's probably working the keyboard. But oh, that's you don't know. You don't know. You don't know. Is there a camera in this room watching him? Mm, I bet not. Maybe. Suspicious. Suspicious. Okay, but imagine how cool it would be to have this room. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Like, like all this, like a yeah. oh. gaming setup. It'd be so cool. It'd be so, yeah. it'd be so cool. Absolutely. Yeah. So that was season one, episode six. Uh... I guess 
What's coming up? Is Sims the dude? He seems to be very, very powerful. Is he like the main powerful guy in the silo? Is he running the janitor's closet? What is the job of the janitors? What is the most important job of the janitors? Is it seriously just like looking at inappropriate spy feeds from inside people's apartments? Is that the most important job? Uh, what's Star Guy? How's he gonna play into the story of the silo? Is he gonna rediscover astrology and then and then it, it like <laughs> astrology weeds its way through the, the people's minds and like undermines judicial? Oh, right. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you think it's gonna become a science? No, it's gonna become That's right. Astrology. <laughs> Sims is like, oh, I'm looking off. You're like, okay, Sagittarius. Yeah, of course you do. Of course you do. Okay, W guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And then what is in the water way down with the drills yeah. that we saw? I'm so yeah. curious. Suspicious. Juliet went down on the rope and then abandoned, came back up. But like, I want to know what's down there. And what about that tunnel that Wilkins found in the hard drive? I forgot What's about in there? That. Is that another silo? Come on, we got to know more. Yo, it would be sick if there was a second silo next door. They just don't talk to their neighbors. I mean, it could be if they, if they flooded it so nobody can go between. There could be a, a, a second silo. The pact is we don't talk to our neighbors. I mean, right? If they flooded the silo, not I'm making this up right now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If they flooded the the lower rungs, the the, the lower level of the society, maybe that isolated them true. from from the true. other silo that doesn't have the pact. Maybe maybe the syndrome is really bad. It's a neurological degenerate disease that actually is contagious. And so, so in order to, to stop the spread, they cut off the other silo, the twin oh. silo. And so it's super bad for the pact because like we had to cut off our sister silo in order to prevent it from coming here. And so if we see it here, we need to shut it down real fast. But it turns out it's not actually contagious. It's just it just happens. People so may, yeah, so maybe maybe the breakup 150 years ago was actually the two silos falling out. They think <gasps> one of the silos had the syndrome and it turned out they got really fearful, flooded the zone, no more communication between the silos. Maybe that, that's something, maybe. I think we just cracked the season wide open. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Next time. Next time, season one, episode seven.